Okay, so we are very happy to have Professor Fedor Petrov uh, uh, to give the final talk, and he will talk about, I think, for the polynomial method for graph coloring. Right. So over to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so. Uh, 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 I would like to talk about several uh, uh, applications of the so-called Agontarsi or polynomial method uh, for uh, usually uh, least uh, graph coverings or uh, choice number. It is called well least coverings. Uh, uh, I start with basic definitions. Uh, uh, so first of all, what is a, a proper graph covering? If G uh, is a finite graph, well, let it be finite. Uh, uh, then uh, C is some set of colors. Then the map F from V to C is called a proper coloring. So each vertex uh, gets its color. Uh, if uh, uh, neighboring vertices get different colors, that is F at V is not equal to f of u for all h u v. Uh, can you okay. write slightly bigger? Sorry, um, sorry about this. Uh, sorry, yeah, is yeah, it okay? Can you write slightly bigger after this? This is up to this is fine. Little bit big, bigger font. Uh, 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 right, a little bit bigger. Okay. Big bigger, right? Bigger. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, then uh, it is a, a very basic uh, definition. I think uh, even people who uh, uh, don't do uh, graph theory every day know about, for example, for Carlos conjecture that uh, every uh, a map may be properly covered. Uh, on the plane or in the sphere, maybe uh, properly colored using uh, four colors. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, let me give uh, another definition uh, of least coloring. So assume that each vertex uh, has a uh, list uh, C of me of appropriate colors. Uh, for example, uh, you may think that uh, the vertices are countries uh, and uh, they want to be covered within, uh, say, colors of the national flag. Uh, okay, then uh, we say that the map V to C of V, uh, formally it is a uh, map from V to the union of these uh, lists, but uh, each vertex must map to uh, 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 its list is called a uh, proper list coloring. And sorry, is the list C of V always finite? Uh, uh, well, it, it, it may be infinite, but if some list is infinite, uh, there are no problems to color. Uh, Indeed. So we, we speak only about finite graphs, and uh, so they don't need infinite lists. So let's think that everything is finite. Uh, 
properly scouring if the same holds. Uh, let call the color again f of v. It belongs to c of v. And again, f of v should not be equal to f of u for any h. And uh, you may define the uh, chromatic number is the minimal number of colors such that proper coloring exists. And a choice number uh, uh, is a minimum of such numbers k, such that whenever uh, size or C of V is uh, at least k, a uh, uh, least coloring exists. A list covering subordinate to this list. This is at least k for every v, every vertex v, right? Uh, yeah, yes, for all v, yes. Thank you. Sorry, and the and, previous uh, c, uh, uh, the chromatic yeah. number c was the union of, should be thought of as the union of the c of v's? C is the all colors, I think. Yeah, c is no. the global. Oh, sorry, yeah, you, you said that already. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, obviously, if all lists are the same, uh, then uh, our list coloring reduces just uh, the usual uh, proper coloring with the same colors for vertices. So it implies that choice number is at least chromatic number. Yes, uh, but uh, it appears that it may be uh, essentially larger. Uh, also, you may think that if colors are different, that it is only easier to color, yeah, because we need colors of neighbors be, to be different. But however, uh, if G is K32, K33, uh, uh, sorry. And uh, each uh, uh, so complete by patch of graph with three edge, uh, with three vertices in each part. And assume that the list has the following one, two, one, three, two, three, one, two, one, three, two, three. Uh, then we cannot color uh, this graph according to this list yeah, because. We cannot use the same color in this part because these lists don't have a common element. So we must use at least two colors. And if these two colors are, for example, one and two, we cannot color this vertex. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, actually, even for bipartite graphs for which uh, chromatic number is at most two, choice number may be a, a bit really large. So these uh, two quantities uh, may differ uh, uh, dramatically. Uh, okay. Uh, what I uh, want to discuss uh, concerns uh, list coverings, but in, in some situations, it gives uh, new, well, for respective times, uh, uh, results even for uh, usual uh, colorings. Uh, so, uh, so let uh, sorry, me... Uh, uh, sorry, Afira, uh -huh. is it known uh, when the equality will hold, like under what kind of sufficient condition? Uh, at least? Uh, it, uh, well, it is a, a, a good question. It, let me formulate the, one of the most intriguing conjectures uh, in graph theory, which concerns this 
concerns your question. It is called uh, least coloring conjecture. That uh, imagine that we color not vertices but edges. Yeah, so uh, two edges with the same uh, endpoint must get different colors. Uh, it is called, I think, line graph. So graph of edges. Uh, for line graphs, choice number equals to chromatic number. Uh, it uh, is widely open. It is proved in many particular cases. I further mention one of them. And uh, it is proved asymptotically. I think it is uh, uh, the ratio tends to one when the uh, number of, uh, I don't remember what uh, tends to infinity, uh, maybe minimal degree or something like that. Uh, or, or maybe he tends to infinity. Yeah, I think uh, that if chromatic number tends to infinity, then the, the ratio tends to one. And uh, it is proved for bipartite graphs uh, and uh, uh, for several complete graphs, by the way, not for all. So there are interesting questions which are open even for complete graphs. Uh, and uh, I further mention one of examples for which it is proved and uh, where many results in this direction are obtained uh, in using polynomial method which I am now passed to. Thank you. Okay. So uh, imagine that uh, all your colors are real numbers. Uh, of course, uh, because we have finitely many finite sets, we, we may always I think that uh, this is the case uh, because we may map different colors to different real numbers. Uh, assume that all, uh, how did I denote it? CV or C of V? C of V, okay. I assume that all C of V are subsets of real numbers. Then consider the so called graph polynomial. Uh, let me denote it PG of uh, variables uh, correspond to uh, vertices. So if you have n vertices, it is a polynomial in n variables. Um, So it is a product over all uh, edges of differences of variables in n points of this edge. Uh, actually, uh, you may say that uh, we should know which uh, vertex is first, which is second, yeah, because we consider difference. It is not symmetric, but anti-symmetric. Uh, uh, this is correct. Uh, and so this is uh, defined up to sign. So let me write a plus minus to stress that uh, I don't care about the choice of the sign. Uh, uh, actually, what I'm interested in is uh, when this polynomial takes zero values and this doesn't depend on sign. Uh, then uh, note that what we want, if we want to co construct a, a properly coloring, is a non-zero value of this polynomial. So we choose uh, the variable for the variable uh, 
uh, the value in the corresponding list. Uh, sorry, this shield of view. And uh, we need not zero value. Yes, it exactly means that uh, neighboring vertices get different colors. Yes, that all brackets or multiples are non zero. Okay, so we reduced our problem to finding a non zero value of a polynomial uh, on the grid, on the direct product of sets. Each variable uh, goes along uh, its own set. And uh, for this, uh, there exists a, a very useful theorem, which is called combinatorial Nullstellensatz. Which is due to Noga Alon. Uh, and I think it is from somewhere in the 90s. Uh, 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 let me formulate it. That, uh, let f of x1 and so on xn be a polynomial over any field oh we apply it for real numbers uh, satisfying the following condition degree of f equals d1 plus dn and the coefficient of x1 to d1 xn to dn of polynomial f is non-zero. That's the notation for the coefficient of uh, this monomial. Then for all sets a1, so on a n in k of corresponding size, the size of set must be one greater than the uh, corresponding degree. There exists a1 in a1 and so on a n in a n, such that the value of polynomial is non-zero. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, then how do we uh, apply this theorem to uh, a graph polynomial just uh, very directly? Yeah, we uh, say that if, yeah, so Carole for graphs, if uh, If the sum of sizes of uh, lists equals to degree of this polynomial is the number of edges, yeah? So equals to the number of edges. And the coefficient, uh, so uh, uh, the uh, list must be one greater than d. Yes, yeah? so uh, c of v, not c of v, but c of v minus one. And. Uh, the coefficient of corresponding monomial, oh, let me write it this way, product over V, XV to size of C of V minus one. 
in the graph polynomial PG is non-zero, then uh, square notation I'm, I'm getting a bit, so what is the square notation can you just quickly tell me once more the square uh, uh, this notation means uh, the uh, is it ideal generated by that or is it? it is a notation for the coefficient for example the coefficient of x oh. y in this polynomial equals to oh, okay, okay 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 coefficient of this in f okay, okay. thank you Yes, coefficient of this monomial in this polynomial. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's uh, immediately follows from uh, what is said above. So uh, first from the interpretation of properly scouring in as a non-vanishing of the polynomial, and then uh, from combinatorial null statement. That. So uh, if you want to apply this method, uh, then uh, uh, what you need, uh, at first it works uh, only if uh, lists are large enough, so the sum of their sizes equals to the number of edges. And then second, uh, Uh, it uh, uh, requires to check that the coefficient is non-zero. And this may be tricky uh, to prove that uh, coefficient of uh, some polynomial is non-zero. Uh, actually, it is uh, not a, a Uh, if and only if condition. So it may appear that coefficient is zero, but this coloring still exists. Yes, then uh, you should prove it some, somehow differently. But, uh, well, uh, in our method, we need to, uh, not our, but uh, uh, Alan Tarsi. This, uh, I think, was suggested even before combinatorial null Stellen, that's itself. Uh, Uh, we uh, need to check that the uh, coefficient is non-zero. First, I discussed several methods uh, of uh, checking this. Uh, but now let me formulate uh, several concrete uh, results, which I find particularly nice, which are proved by this method. So if the coefficient is zero, do you have to go to the formal derivative or something? I'm just guessing. It's much more complicated than that. Uh, sorry. So if the see if this, you, as you said, this is this is just a sufficient condition. So if the coefficient becomes zero, yes. then what will you do? You will do something, some other technique. Uh, you you may use combinatorial methods for proving that the least covering exists. Oh, okay. So yeah. And, this uh, don't work. The, the other methods, yeah, some some variance of greedy algorithms of some currents in uh, clever order. Also, you may use uh, lowest local lemma for probabilistic uh, arguments, uh, which are also used in uh, the, this uh, area. So there, there are other methods, yeah. But pure algebraic method won't give you. Uh, sorry? So pure algebraic method is not going to give you them. So you need other methods. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let me mention several theorems which are proved using this uh, uh, algebraic method. The first is belongs to uh, Alon and Tarsi. Uh, sorry. Alon and Tarsi. Uh, that uh, A choice number of planar by parted graph uh, is at most three. I uh, recall the famous result by Thomason that uh, choice number of 
any planar graph is at most five. It is a choice version of four colors conjecture. And for four colors, uh, it is not true. So there are planar graphs which are not for choosable. Yeah, so the, for some clever lists, uh, you cannot color them. Uh, but uh, it is at most five, and it is, uh, has a very beautiful combinatorial inductive proof by Thomas. And uh, this uh, proof is also beautiful, but it is algebraic, not combinatorial. I don't know combinatorial proof of this result. The second uh, result, uh, let it be the following. Uh, if we started to speak about planar graph, um, uh, let me one moment uh, check the spelling. Uh, uh, spelling is very difficult. Uh, well, let me copy the names of these guys. Uh, um, I don't know where, whether it works. Let me check. Oh, uh, yeah, it does. Uh, Alan Gaman Godin uh, proved the following result. Uh, let G be a, a planner, possibly multi. So uh, uh, multiple edges are allowed. Multi graph, uh, regular uh, of degree R. So for uh, any vertex, there are R edges going from this vertex. For example, this uh, graph corresponds to R equal to four, I think. Yes. And uh, assume that uh, there exists a coloring uh, of edges. Uh, so that you may color the edges in a colors so, uh, and uh, in each vertex, you have a uh, different colors. Uh, I don't know whether it is true here. Well, I think it is, right? Uh, let me use different colors for them. Uh, for example, for these two edges, we use red. Uh, uh, for uh, these two edges, we use magenta. This and this. Uh, magenta is too similar to red, sorry. Uh, okay, let's use green. And uh, finally, for uh, what should we also change? No, oh, for example, these two uh, edges uh, are blue. Uh, this and this. Yeah, so now we have four different colors uh, at each vertex. Uh, then, Uh, choice number of uh, line graph of G. So let me write just edges of G. Uh, equals to A. Ah. So in this case, choice number equals to chromatic number of edges of G, because of course we cannot use less than A uh, colors for coloring edges properly, right? Just uh, look at any vertex. 
So uh, uh, as I uh, promised, uh, there is an example of least covering conjecture, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, proved uh, using uh, polynomial method. Uh, okay. The next example is uh, R. Josh. Uh, cycle plus triangles uh, graph. It is the following. You take a Hamiltonian cycle, which passes through all vertices. Three N vertices. Uh, and you add uh, n uh, triangles. Uh, with disjoint vertices. So each vertex belongs exactly to uh, one triangle. There's joint vertices. Uh, this uh, example is not very good. I think here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and you should add uh, three triangles like Z. And uh, for example, Z and another one. So none of the triangle edges can be of the original uh, 3N vertex graph. Uh, so? I mean, when, uh, when you say add uh, N triangles, none of the edges of the triangle can be of the original graph. So can have uh, what? Uh... I think the question is, are you doubling the number of edges by adding these triangles? Sorry, are, yes, are you yes, adding exactly. three so, uh, Yes, uh, of course. So we can get a regular graph of degree four. Each vertex has degree four. So, 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 so there and are no... Josh conjecture that... Yes. Sorry, there are no uh, old edges that are being used in these newly added triangles. So what do you, what do you say? Uh, yes, I don't use uh, 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 old edges. Actually, uh, what I say uh, further uh, admits uh, multiple edges. So you may use uh, old edge in triangle two. Then you just draw a multiple edge so okay. that the graph is still for regular. But I think in original formulation of Erdos, they were forbidden. Uh, in any case, it is not crucial in this question. Yeah. Well, that thing that uh, you don't uh, have multiple edges. Uh, uh, Josh conjectured that chromatic number of such graph equals three. Well, of course, it cannot be less because in each triangle you need three different colors. Uh, but uh, uh, can you choose uh, vertices in these colors so that the graph uh, so you need to use uh, three colors for each triangle, yeah? And uh, you need uh, uh, also, uh, you have abstractions coming from Hamiltonian cycles. You cannot uh, use the same color, say, for these two vertices. And, uh, and uh, uh, it is proved also with polynomial method, and here, it is non-trivial to prove that coefficient is non-zero. Uh, I think uh, it is proved by, uh, again, let me check. Uh, uh, the uh, I think Fleischner and Stibitz. 
Uh, one moment. Yeah. Uh, these guys, uh, they uh, proved Erdős conjecture and also proved that even choice number of G uh, equals to uh, three. Uh, actually, what they proved is uh, that the corresponding coefficient when uh, each variable comes in uh, degree in power two, uh, this coefficient is non-zero. And uh, uh, another example, uh, consider uh, toroidal n times m grid. So you take uh, n times n rectangle and uh, map a torus from it and define this uh, uh, edges and these two edges. And uh, imagine that uh, each uh, uh, rectangle is a country. So say there's a toroidal planet, which is partitioned by n parallels and uh, m meridians, or how do you, do you call them on the torus? Uh, uh, never mind. It is partitioned onto NM countries, and each country has a, a list of, of admissible colors. Then uh, the question is when you can uh, properly color the map, uh, the toroidal globe of uh, such a planet. Uh, the theorem by Lee Shaw Gardeev and me, uh, then if an M is, sorry. If an M is uh, even, uh, then uh, choice number of such graph uh, equals three. Uh, so if uh, each uh, country tells you three colors, then you can uh, properly color uh, this map. Uh, uh, again, uh, maybe it is uh, at most three, but I think that usually, uh, uh, let me say at most, but I think in, in almost all non-trivial cases, it equals to three. I don't remember it out of my head. Uh, uh, this is almost always equality because you have some examples when you uh, for two, two colors are not enough. Uh, uh, okay. Well, uh, if uh, n or m is uh, odd, uh, then such example is trivial. Even for a cycle, the, the two colors are not enough. But I think even if both are even, uh, then uh, two cycles are still not enough. Okay. Well, and uh, again, here the more subtle thing is to prove that coefficient is non zero. Uh, okay, so I think I have uh, about uh, uh, there are other interesting examples uh, of uh, uh, applications of a polynomial method, but uh, uh, let me uh, stop with enumerating. Uh, results. I, uh, well, my personal opinion. Uh, yes. I have a question. So you prove this coefficient yes. is non-zero, and then proving that in different theorems, obviously, are in different using different techniques, right? Proving, uh, sorry. Sorry, I said the co proving that the coefficient is non-zero will need different yes. methods in different cases, right? Obviously. Yes. Yes, we did it in different methods in different cases. Yes, it can be uh, so, quite challenging as I can uh, understand. Uh, well, so philosophically, uh, if you want to prove that some integer is non zero, how can you prove this? I know two uh, uh, principally different ways. Uh, the first way is to prove that it is positive, another way is to prove that it is odd. Oh, yeah, well, maybe uh, sometimes not odd, uh, but say not divisible by t. 
for some other prime p or not prime but uh, co composite uh, but uh, uh, basically uh, i think mathematicians don't know other ways to prove that uh, an integer is non zero and uh, let me say in serum one you prove that it is positive in serum two you prove that it is positive in serum three you prove that it is odd uh, after uh, you divide it by something uh, I think it is two modulo four or something like that. Okay, uh, half of this coefficient is odd. And then theorem four, you again prove that it is positive or, or negative. Or, uh, again, uh, uh, up to something, uh, you prove that it is possible. So you see that both methods are used. Okay, but uh, uh, let me mention the. Uh, a very general result which uh, allows you to work with coefficients. Uh, that is a coefficient formula. And it is uh, also used in uh, uh, proving some of theorems from the previous slide. It is the following uh, very useful formula. Assume that you have a polynomial f and degree of f doesn't exceed g1 plus dn. So this condition may be weakened, but uh, let me say now this way, maybe I recall later about how it may be improved uh, and assume that you want to reconstruct the corresponding coefficient x1 to g1 and so on in uh, polynomial f and you want to reconstruct this coefficient from the values so you have sets a1 a2 so on a n in k the size of a y equals di plus one then uh, what does combinatorial null stellar that tells us it tells that if all values of f on the product of the sets are equal to zero then the coefficient is equal to zero uh, but uh, some general algebraic Mumba Yumba suggests that uh, it uh, means that there must be a formula which reconstructs the coefficient from the values. And indeed, such formula exists. Let me write it. So you take the variables from corresponding sets. And uh, you substitute it and you have the coefficient of this value and uh, it is the following denominator, which comes from uh, Lagrange interpolation. Mm. That is the denominator. Uh, for each variable, you have its own denominator, and then you take the product, and the sound is uh, exactly what you get in Lagrange interpolation formula in the denominator uh, of corresponding summand. Yes. Uh, so once uh, this uh, formula is formulated, it is not difficult to prove it because both parts are linear with respect to F. So you may prove it only when F is a monomial. And uh, for monomial uh, uh, left hand side is something trivial. The coefficient of monomial in monomial is uh, either zero for most times, or sometimes it equals to one. If this monomial is this monomial, otherwise it is zero. And the right-hand side 
is a, uh, if you look at it uh, uh, attentively, you see that it is a, just a product. So it factorizes as a product in uh, different variables. And so you reduce your theorem to one dimensional case. Because uh, for any other monomial, either some variable is in degree strictly less than the i, then corresponding multiple is zero, or all are equal to the i, then all multiples are. Uh, it is an uh, express uh, proof of uh, this formula. This formula was uh, reconstructed, uh, uh, reproved by different authors. Uh, I think that uh, by Uwe Schaus. Then by Michael Lason, or Lason uh, and also by Roma Karasov and myself uh, in uh, second uh, about 2010 uh, of these papers. Our was uh, later than two previous. Uh, the first is to shows. But actually, if you look at uh, classical works, which I highly suggest to uh, everybody, uh, uh, actually, Carl uh, Gustav Jacobi has something which is essentially this formula. So this is some uh, 19th century, yes. Uh, and uh, of course, this formula immediately yields combinatorial null stellen sets. Yeah, because if all if the coefficient is non zero, then at least one value is non zero. You just, it is clear, yes. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, how do we use this formula for finding the coefficient? We uh, uh, choose clever sets AI so that uh, this sum in the right hand side uh, is something which we may deal with usually we may deal with because many summons are equal to zero uh, another trick uh, it is not used uh, at least i don't know uh, it is not used for uh, graph polynomials uh, but for some other polynomials within the Coefficient it is used is to change polynomial f by adding lower degree terms. So that this coefficient it is of the highest degree, yeah? it doesn't change, but the values may change dramatically. And if you add lower degree terms in a clever way, you often may achieve that almost all values are zero, and this sum simplifies a lot, uh, usually to only one sum. Uh, okay, and uh, for example, this formula is used in proving uh, our result with Li Shao and Gardeev. And uh, uh, here, these are equals equal to two, and it uh, mean you is uh, very convenient to choose AI equals to the set of. Uh, Uh, cubic roots of one. Uh, uh, I think it was called theorem four uh, for this toroidal, can, uh, toroidal planet. Uh, then uh, it is useful to use uh, such sets, not uh, zero, one, two, as is used in many other uh, results, but uh, one omega omega square. And then uh, you see that your uh, coefficient equals to the trace of several matrix to power n. And uh, with this choice of A's, uh, A is uh, anti symmetric, uh, anti admission. Anti -admission. So if n is even, uh, it yields uh, that this trace, it equals to the sum of eigenvalues to power n. Uh, eigenvalues are all uh, poorly imaginary. 
And if n is even, this is of course non-zero because they all have the same sign. If n is divisible by four, they are positive. If n is two modulo four, they are all negative. No, uh, of course you should check that uh, they are not all zero, but it is easy to check just because the matrix is not zero. Uh, okay, uh, that's uh, a couple of words about the proof of uh, theorem four. And this uh, formula that coefficient is a trace uh, also follows from this. If you look at the graph polynomial uh, carefully. Uh, what uh, we do in, uh, for example, theorem one. When I uh, remember that we consider planar by pattern graph. Actually, if graph is by pattern, uh, the things are easier because of the following trick. I remember that our polynomial is such a product, x u minus x v where u and v, where uv is h, right? uv is h. But uh, if graph is by part, you made the following trick. In one part, you replace all xv to minus xv. So you change these variables. Uh, yeah, I, and in second part, uh, you don't do this. Then what happens? Because each edge joins vertices from different part, uh, you, instead of this minus, you get plus, right? Uh, it is uh, either both times minus or both times plus, but uh, up to sign, which we don't care about. It is just product of xu plus xv. And this is uh, very good because it means that if you expand the brackets, nothing cancels. Yeah, for non bipartite graphs, there may be uh, tricky cancellations if you expand the brackets in the product of differences. But if you expand the brackets in the product of sums, there is no cancellation. And you just want to prove that you may. Uh, choose at least one. Uh, there is at least one way to get a necessary monomial when you expand the brackets. Yes. And uh, what uh, what does it mean from combinatorial point of view? So for each edge, you use I, either XU or XV. You may uh, look at it as an orientation of H. So if you use XV, for example, you take XU, XV, uh, orientated uh, this way. And we want that uh, all variables are in power at most two. Yes, and uh, the lists of sizes three are enough. Because uh, I recall that size of list of colors is one more than power of corresponding variable. So what you want, you want an orientation, orientation of the, hmm. Uh, for any uh, of a planar by pattern graph with uh, in degrees or oh, out degrees, it is a equivalent statement with in degrees at most two. In degrees at most, sorry, at most two, at most three. It is difficult. To, uh, yes, I think in, in degrees must be at most. One moment. Uh, yeah, I think at most two, yes. Yes. 
Yeah, 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 that's okay. Yeah, in degrees at most two. Actually, such orientation always exists. Uh, why why does it exist, and how do we use the graphics planner? Uh, well, then uh, we should remember something from graph theory. Uh, so, for any graph, not necessarily planner, not necessarily by budget, and uh, two not necessarily equal to two. Uh, the criterion of the existence of such orientation is the following for any uh, sets of vertices U, the number of edges inside U is at most twice the size of U. Of course, it is necessary, yeah, because if we in degrees are at most two, then the number of edges is at, at most this, yeah because each of them comes out from one vertex. Uh, 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 well, it comes to one vertex, so okay. But uh, actually, it is a general result in graph theory. It is similar to whole lemma, but uh, sometimes I call this uh, result as a the non bipartite the whole lemma because uh, it doesn't use them the graph is bipartite. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and then for bipartite planar graph, uh, this uh, inequality holds because uh, of application of uh, Euler formula and uh, the result, uh, the observation that each face it it cannot be triangle because it is bipartite, yeah? And for, if it is not triangle, then it has at least four edges. And then a little play with Euler formula allows you to prove that for bipartite graph, you have this uh, inequality. Uh, okay, I think that I uh, should uh, already stop. So I uh, explained the, Uh, what is hidden between uh, two for uh, well i think that's enough uh, for two other results you also use interest in parity uh, theorems i mean for results two and three uh, but well uh, I, i'm afraid i don't have time for that uh, thank you very much ah, thank you so much uh, this was a very nice uh introduction to the combinatorial method and uh, yeah uh, are there any questions for uh, further questions for the speaker so what is polynomial method is basically use of combinatorial null transit or uh, yes so uh, the uh, uh, of course polynomial method uh, is not uh, necessarily for using combinatorial null transit yet it is for using polynomials so that you reduce your combinatorial problem uh, to some properties of polynomials, like here we reduce the existence of properly covering to the existence of non-zero value of the polynomial. But of course, there are other variations of polynomial method, and uh, it was used for several recent breakthroughs, uh, like uh, that uh, of uh, Kutlev Pach in additive combinatorics, so by Dvir uh, in finite field Takea conjecture and by uh, Netscarts and Larry Gould in Erdos unit distance problem. Uh, and it is uh, quite developed uh, and uh, one of the most important methods of modern combinatorics. Uh, actually, many problems uh, are actually about hidden polynomials. So is the, the root left part is that cap set problem? Yes. Right. Actually, it is a, uh, the, the method is probably very similar to what happens in Kabatoru no Sherin. That's uh, also, it is not uh, formally uh, uh, connected. So they don't use neither the formula nor the Kabatoru no Sherin that's itself, but they use the same manipulations with polynomials, which are used for proving them. Ah, I see something in the chat. 
Yeah, I did. Uh, okay, um, yes, I, I did say it's correct. Yeah, and I think, yes, that uh, suggesting the book of Rare Good is a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. And uh, yeah, any further questions? Yeah, so uh, I have a question. So okay, this is not a question, but this choice of yeah. AIs is the critical thing here, right? And that's can be the choice of AIs. You have to really do it cleverly. Yes. That's the critical thing in the proof. Uh, yes, the choice of uh, uh, AIs, yeah, it is uh, say an art. Yes, so this is yes. a methodology which is the same for all problems and in each specific problem you should be creative and choose AIs and sometimes also uh, change the polynomial as I said by a clever way yes yeah you, for example if you choose AIs in such a way that lot of this co lot, lot of these parts of the coefficient is already zero then it's easy to handle so things like that you have the coefficient formula right if in the, in the coefficient formula if already some part is already giving you zero, then you have to handle the rest and so things like that, right? Yes. But you see, the, for example, here, uh, they are not zero at all. Right, here, for right, example, right. Here right. Four, but however, it is still useful. Still useful. It's very nice. So the heart of the thing lies in the choice of the AIs, as you said, that's the art of the proof. Uh, yes. Thank you. Very nice talk. I really enjoyed it. I was very Thank tired you. of my talk and after not sleeping well last night, but then it was so engrossing that I really followed the talk. Thank you. <laughs> would it be possible to uh, save these notes and maybe share these as slides? Yes, that would be awesome. Uh, yes, I may share the uh, slides. I may send them by email. Yes, yes. yes. That would be great. Yes. Okay. Uh, any further questions? If not, then I think yeah, we can thank the speaker again for a very nice talk. And uh, yeah, thank you. This, this I guess concludes the symposium, and it was a very nice yeah uh, second day to it as well. So yeah, thank you everyone. But one second.